it's really difficult to talk about the PyCom compositor because you have to be very specific about which version you're actually referring to. And I don't just mean which version number, that would be something completely normal to do. So in the case of a lot of other projects, when new features are being worked on, they'll be worked on in something called a feature branch, which is basically a branch inside of Git where you work on that feature and nothing else, and then eventually that feature might get merged back into the main branch. In the case of PyCom though, it does actually make use of these feature branches, but also a lot of the coolest features are worked on in completely separate forks. So if you want to use any of them, you might have to sacrifice this feature or this feature or this feature, and it's kind of a confusing mess. So today I just wanted to explain the forks that you should actually care about and what each of them actually do. Now, what I'm gonna say is only gonna be true in December 2020 right now. If you watch this in three or four months, there might be four or five other forks that you should care about, but I don't know about those right now, so this is what I'm gonna talk about. So the main PyCon fork we have is this one right here by YShui. Now, if you go and download PyCon from any of your standard repos, this is the one you're going to download. So if you do something like sudo pacman s pycom, this is the one you get. Now, it obviously won't be the absolute latest version, but you'll get the latest release version. Now, I say pycom fork because pycom wasn't the program that started all this mess, because pycom was a fork of an older program called Compton. So that would be this one right here by chjj or what's his name christopher jeffrey so the reason why pycom exists basically you can see that this one isn't exactly being maintained anymore and compton had a bunch of bugs in it so why should we decided that he's going to take over the project now i remember this causing a lot of confusion over on reddit where you had one of those situations where pacman would say hey would you like to replace this package with this package and in this case it was a completely different name project so people weren't really sure what they were actually supposed to be doing. But if you just replaced it, it worked perfectly fine. But here's where it gets even more fun. So initially when PyCom was forked from Compton, it wasn't actually called PyCom. It was just Yshui's fork of Compton. So after, I don't know, a couple of months or so, when it became the main fork, that's when they decided to actually go and rename the project. Now, the reason why they renamed it is because it's actually tradition with this line of programs to go and rename it when it becomes the main program. So Compton wasn't the start of this mess either. So Compton was a fork of another program called xcompmgr dana and then that was a fork of another program called xcompmgr. So this isn't even the confusing part. This is just the long history of this project. So I expect at some point for PyCom to not be maintained anymore and then for someone to go and fork the project, call it PyCom, and then a couple of months later it gets a new name and that's going to be the new main compositor everyone goes and uses. So it's absolutely nothing new for a project to have a bunch of different forks. Even in the case of PyCom, it has 147 forks and most of them really don't matter. But the reason why PyCom is an interesting case is because there actually are a lot of really useful forks. So if we go over to the AUR, we can see that a bunch of them have actually been put onto here. So we can get things like PyCom ibhagwan git PyCom jonaberg git PyCom rounded corners git PyCom try one git and this is just a Git version of the main repo. So we can also go over to Compton and we can see there's a bunch of ones over here as well. So we have Compton black cap coder, Compton try one black cap coder, Compton try one git so as you can probably tell, it's kind of difficult to work out what each of these individual forks actually go and do. So at this stage, there's a few maintainers that you should care about. So we have Yshui, who I mentioned before, CHJJ, but we also have Try1144, SD Hand, Earpugwan, Black Cap Coder, and Jonaberg. Now, not all of them are still developing their forks, but all of them are still very important to what's happening today in PyCom. We've talked about Yshui and CHJJ's forks, so let's just jump straight into Try1144s. Now, this version is PyCom Try1 Git if you download it from the AUR, and this is the version that you've probably come across plenty of times before. So basically, this brings in a new version of Blur to PyCom, which actually makes Blur usable on most systems. So the original version of Blur inside of PyCom was called Kernel Blur, and at least on my system, I could never get it working. But on the systems where it did work, it wasn't that fast, and it kind of just really slowed down your system just for an aesthetic thing. But with Try1's version, it brings in something called Dual Kawase Blur. Now, the nice thing about Dual Kawase Blur is that it runs multi-threaded. So if you have a decent CPU, and basically any CPU that is released in the past 15 or 20 years is going to be a multi-threaded CPU, it's going to run much, much faster than the single-threaded version. 
Now, Try One did originally maintain this as a Compton fork, but he ended up abandoning that one along with Compton being abandoned and redoing it as a PyCon fork. Now, I'm guessing the reason why that was done is because having this forked from the PyCon repo rather than the Compton repo is going to make it much easier to actually rebase back into PyCon. And that was actually done very recently. So in the latest version of PyCom, not the latest release version, but the actual latest version of the repo, it actually has this dual color say blur method in it. So hopefully in the next release version, it will actually have this functionality in it still. And this fork then no longer needs to exist. Now, the next fork we have is SD Hands Fork. Now, this is the only fork that's actually not named after the developer inside of the AUR. So, this fork basically adds in rounded corners. So, in the AUR, it's called PyCom rounded corners. So, it really doesn't give much an indication of what it actually does in here, which is absolutely great. So, this is sort of another problem that exists with all of the PyCom forks as well. The readmes are terrible. Some of them don't even bother to update the readmes. Some of them just add like a single line in there. But most of them don't really give much of an indication of what this fork actually does. So this fork, it adds in rounded corners. But if you want rounded corners, this generally isn't the fork that most people actually use. And it's funny it calls it a active fork when uh, it hasn't had any updates in at least eight months. <laughs> anyway, so the fork that most people use if they want to have rounded corners is Ibhaguan's fork. So this one was just called pycom ibhaguan git and this one doesn't just add in rounded corners. What it actually does is merges together a couple of the other forks. So this one has try one's blur method, and it also has the rounded corners from SD hand, as well as having some new rounded corner code, because I'm guessing they just didn't work that amazingly in SD hand's original implementation. Now, this also did exist as a Compton version, which was Compton ibhaguan git. But as you can see, now we don't just have forks, but we also have forks that merge together other forks. So this is why it starts to get a bit confusing. Now there is one Compton exclusive fork I want to mention, and that is Black Cap Coders. And the reason why I want to mention that one is because this one actually is being used in one of the later PyCon forks we're going to look at. So this one is interesting because it actually adds in animation to PyCon. And I don't just mean, oh, here's a bit of fading animation like already exists. This actually adds in proper window movement animation. So as we can see, give it just a moment to get started. As you slide a window around, it actually slides across the screen and you can actually rearrange everything and it shifts the entire screen around. Now, if you do want to try out Black Cap Coder's code, the best way to do so seems to be with Jonaberg's fork. So pycom jonaberg git Now, this one doesn't just come with the Black Cap Coder code and it actually has a properly updated readme. So if we scroll down just a bit, there's this GIF here, which is... Uh, the frame rate's a bit off on that, but there is a GIF. Basically, this one comes with Try One's Dual Color Say. It also comes with Ibhaguan's Improved Rounded Corners. So not just SD Hand's original code, also what Ibhaguan actually added into it. And also it comes with Black Cap Coders animations. But this doesn't mean that everything's perfect because Jonaberg's fork, if we scroll up just a bit, as we will see, the last update was two months ago. So it's not exactly being maintained at this point. And if we go to Jonaberg's profile, we'll see that Jonaberg isn't exactly committing anything over on GitHub. So this fork's probably just going to be abandoned. So when it comes to using PyCom, you sort of have two choices. One, you can use the main branch and it'll be really fast, it'll be really stable, you'll keep getting updates fairly regularly, but you don't get any of this cool stuff like rounded corners or these animations. You do get blur, so maybe one day the things you're going to like will be merged into the main branch, but if they're not, you sort of have to live without them. Or you can go and use something like Jonah Berg's fork and risk it being abandoned at some point and never being updated, so maybe you'll have to go and maintain it yourself or wait until someone else decides to maintain it, Basically, you are kind of stuck no matter what you do. On my system, I'm running the Git version of PyCom, so the one you can get from the AUR, which does mean that from time to time, it isn't going to be the most stable, but it also means that I get access to the dual color say blur in the latest version of the repo. So I like that. That's really the only one of these features I actually care about. Rounded corners, it sounds cool, but I like having my angly corners. I would never actually use it. As for the animations, if they were in the main repo, maybe I'll try them out from time to time, but I've never actually had animations on this system besides doing fading, so it's not something I desperately want to have. 
So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris Joachim, Donald Corbinian, Andre Nathan, Montaza Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go on some more work, there are links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.